Hello class, today we're going to go ahead and cover section 5.6, which is on the quadratic formula. Um, and here is an example. Competitors in the 10 meter platform diving competition jump upward and outward before diving into the pool below. The height of a diver in meters above the pool after T seconds can be approximated by the equation H equals and what is shown here. How many seconds it take for the diver to hit the pool? Well, if I want to know when the diver hits the pool, that's when the height is equal to zero. So what we would need to do in order to solve this is I would go ahead and plug in zero for H. In the past, our options have been factoring. Do you think you could factor something like that? Considering it has a 4.9, a decimal, it would be pretty hard. And so typically, this is not factorable. Um, so we would not be able to factor to solve this one. Another option is, could we solve it by graphing? Um, we could solve it by graphing. Uh, you could use your graphing calculator to do so. Uh, or you could graph it by hand, but graphing by hand won't give you a very exact solution. So you could go ahead and graph it. Your other option is to use the quadratic formula. So the solutions of a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, okay, can be found by using the quadratic formula, which is right here. Uh, so it's the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And one thing I just want to point out is that a is always the number in front of the x squared, b is always the number in front of x, and c is always the number that is alone or the constant. So in my quadratic formula, I have this part underneath the square root sign, b squared minus 4ac. That is called the discriminant. If the discriminant is greater than 0, or in other words, that means it's positive, then there are two real solutions. Because what would happen is, in my formula, it's plus or minus the square root of 50, so I would have plus the square root of 50 and minus the square root of 50 to get me my two solutions. And here, graphically, I would have two solutions if I were to graph that. The next one is if my discriminant is equal to zero. Then there's only going to be one real solution. Because if you would take your negative b plus or minus zero, all divided by 2a, you're just going to have negative b over 2a. So it would only be one solution, um, and it would be sitting on the x-axis. And then lastly, if our discriminant is less than zero, or that means it's negative, then there are going to be no real solutions, but two complex roots. And so what that would look like is if I have the square root of negative 20, and graphically what that would mean is I do not hit the x-axis at all. So we are going to use the quadratic, we're going to solve using the quadratic formula number one. Um, one thing I want to say is typically we use the quadratic formula when we cannot factor something. Um, so if I were to look at this problem right off the bat, I would probably try and factor it. I would say what multiplies to negative 28 but adds to negative 12? Well, negative 14 and 2 add to negative 12. So I can factor this one. So typically, if we had the choice, we would not use the quadratic formula here. But my directions tell me to solve using the quadratic formula. So I have to solve using the quadratic formula. If I was using the quadratic formula, I'd still have to put it in standard form. So here it is in standard form. And now I just plug everything in. I like to write down what A, B, and C are right away. Once again, A is what's in front of your x squared. So that's really a 1. B is what's in front of your x, so negative 12. And C is the number that's all by itself, so negative 28. I go ahead and I plug it into my quadratic formula. x is equal to the opposite of b, so b is negative 12, so now it would be positive 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 12 squared, minus 4 times my a, which is 1, times my c, which is negative 28 all over 2 times my a, which is 1. If 
I go ahead and simplify what is in my square root sign, and I recommend that you do that first, I will get that it's the square root of 256 all over 2. And then I know that the square root of 256 is 16. Then I would go ahead and I would say, well, x is equal to 12 plus 16 over 2. And x is equal to 12 minus 16 over 2. Well, 12 plus 16 will give you 28. 28 divided by 2 will give me 14. And here, 12 minus 16 gives me negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 gives me negative 2. Those are my solutions. So, if I were to go back to my factored form and I would set each part equal to 0, would I get the same answers? So here I will get 14, and here I will get negative 2. So it's always important, I think, to check, can I factor it first? Because factoring is much quicker than plugging into the quadratic formula. But if the directions say use the quadratic formula, you have to use the quadratic formula. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the next example. Example 2. I would actually like for you to do this one on your own. So pause the video and do example two all on your own. Here is example two all set up. Um, one thing I would notice is it's the square root of 56, and that is not a perfect square. So what I would like for you to do is to simplify it like we did in section 5.4. So I would have x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus. Well, I would think to myself, what is my perfect square that is in 56? Hmm, well... I know 4 times 14 will give me 56, so that's my perfect square that's in there, and then I'm going to be over 4. So x will equal negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 14, all over 4. And then I would notice that each part here is divisible by 2, so I would divide everything by 2. So I would get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 14, all over 2. And that would be as simplified as possible. So you could leave your answer like this, or you could go ahead and write your answer separately. You could have x is equal to negative 2 plus the square root of 14 all over 2. That's one answer. Or your other answer would be negative 2 minus the square root of 14 all over 2. Whichever way you want to write it will be fine with me, as long as you understand that there are two solutions. Let's go ahead and move on to example three. Once again, I would like for you to pause and start setting this one up on your own. All right, if you go ahead and look at example three, I have set it up here in the red, and then I simplified in the green. You should notice that underneath my square root sign, I have a negative. So what that means is I can rewrite this, because we should simplify it all the way, as a square root of negative one times 23 all over 6. Well, we know that the square root of negative 1 is i, so it's i square root of 23 all over 6. That would be my simplified version, and I can leave my answer like that because I noticed that none of these numbers here are divisible by the same thing, so that's simplified all the way. All right, example 4. The path of a football thrown across the field is given by the equation y equals 0.005x squared plus x plus 5, where x represents the distance in feet the ball has traveled horizontally. Horizontally. And y represents the height in feet of the ball above the ground. How far has the ball traveled horizontally when it returns to the ground? Well, I know that this is a parabola, and it opens downward. Okay, so this is my parabola. And I want to know how far has the ball traveled horizontally when it returns to the ground. Well, this is where the ball starts, and horizontally is this direction. So I want to know what this value is. Well, I think, what do I know about that value? Well, I know the height is at zero feet right here. And my height is represented by y. So I know that y is equal to 0. So I can plug 0 in for y to solve this.
And I look at this and I realize I'm not going to use a quadratic formula, or sorry, I'm not going to factor this. I am going to use a quadratic formula. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the quadratic formula. So I have negative 0 0.005 as my A. My B is 1 and my C is 5. So X is equal to the opposite of B, so negative 1, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times my A times my C, all over 2 times my A. So then I would go ahead and simplify, and I highly recommend you practice simplifying on your calculator because most people get this wrong because they do not know how to simplify. But if I do everything right here on my calculator, I would get the square root of 1.1 divided by negative 0 0.01, okay? Well, I now have my solution. I just need to type it into my calculator. So x is equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 1.1 divided by negative 0 0.01. When I go ahead and do this, you should get negative 4.881. Well, eight, x is representing the horizontal distance traveled, so we are not looking at a negative 4.88 one feet. So I do not want that solution. So I go ahead and look at my other solution where I subtract the square root of 1.1 over negative 0 0.01. And if I type this into my calculator, and I highly encourage you to please do so, uh, you will get 204.881, and this is labeled in feet. So horizontally, the ball has traveled 2.04.8. Sorry, 204.881 feet, or you could say about 205 feet. We're going to go ahead and stop the video there. Please make sure you go back and do the video quiz, um, and we will do number five in class tomorrow. So have a nice night, and I will see you then.